So suppose we have this piece of code here where we first allocate memory for two integers, right? We have offset x, which is a pointer to a block of memory that is of size of the size of int, which is four bytes, and then another one similarly, but uh, named offset of y. And then of course we check if uh, mi local returned null, fair enough. And then we set some values to them. And all of a sudden at the end, we forget to free both of them. We simply free offset of x and we forget about offset of y. So in this case, we have what is called a memory leak. Now, in this case, it's pretty easy to figure it out, but if the program was much larger, it would be really difficult to find what's what's wrong. So can we automatically detect memory leaks? The answer is yes, at least in Visual Studio. I'm gonna show you in this video how to do that in Visual Studio. First things first, what you have to do is to include a library and that library is called crtdebug.h. So this guy is from C runtime. Uh, from the C runtime library and uh, it's specific to the Visual C compiler. What this library does is replace our malloc and free, well, functions to a custom ones so that they can track basically what has been allocated and what has been deallocated at the end of our program. But notice that we don't have any way of telling it, okay, well, here's the end of the program. So what we have to do is at the end is call a function called underscore CRT dump memory leaks. That's simple enough, right? And you don't have to pass in any parameters. No, so no uh, additional variables, no nothing. You just have to call this function at the end of the program. Now, if I try to run this, now under the debug output, right? You can see here some messages saying that detected memory leaks. So it did detect some memory leaks and the cool part is it's going to tell you that uh, the memory that has been leaked is at this memory location. It's four bytes long. Remember our integer is four bytes. So size of int is four. So we know that that is true. And it also has this data. Hmm, this is a an interesting bit of data because we've assigned the the leaked memory guy here, we've assigned it the value 20. But why is it getting 14? That's because it's in hexadecimal. So 14 is actually in hexadecimal. That means that we have to say uh, in decimal to translate it, we have to multiply one by 16 and then add four. So that's, that's going to be 20. Right. So then we're going to get the value 20. So that means that this is in fact, really the guy that actually got leaked. Now that's nice and all it's telling me what data is in it, but what if the data is just plain old garbage and doesn't help at all. And the memory address is just arbitrary. Well, what you can do is actually define a macro here, like right before including CRT DBG, I'm going to actually put it above all the includes, but you just have to put it above this include specifically, otherwise it's not going to work. So I'm going to say here define underscore CRT DBG uh, map alloc. All right, so that that's going to do a couple things. In fact, you might notice that this got replaced with uh, a uh, macro instead of a function call. And now when we try to run this, right, so same thing as before, if we take a look at the output, we get a similar stuff, we get a normal block at the memory address, four bytes long, the data inside of it. But before all this, we're getting the actual file in which this uh, memory leak occurred or actually got allocated. See, you get main.c, that's my, that's the file that we're working with right now. And eight is the line at which this occurred. And the line at which the memory got allocated is in fact the eighth line, which is this one. So now you can notice, okay, well, it's this variable, of course, and then you can uh, start fixing it and start adding the free uh, call down here. Nice. Now, remember when I said that you have to add this function call at the end of your program? Well, your program might exit from multiple places. So uh, it might be difficult to actually add it everywhere 
in your program. What you can do is instead of having a function call, have a line of code that enables a flag anywhere in your program before the program finishes. So if I say this guy, it's going to enable that output right before finishing its execution, right? So it's going to output everything it's got right before finishing. The tracking still occurs uh, as before. It's just that you can simply set this at the beginning of your program and you don't have to care about where the, your program ends and you don't have to care about that function call at all anymore. And now you can do the same and you might notice that, okay, the output is at the end now, but that's the same output that we had before. One crucial thing for all this to work is to make sure you're actually on the debug uh, configuration. If you're actually using release, well, if I run this now, you'll notice that you don't get any sort of output regarding the memory leaks. That's because this whole library doesn't work on the release configuration. It only works uh, on the debug configuration, specifically if it has a certain uh, macro set. And with Visual Studio, that's all there is to it. I'm gonna leave down the description below a link to the article that talks about all this and even more. You can customize even the place where you want this output to be basically sent. So I hope this was useful. If you do have any questions, do leave them down in the comments below or on our Discord server. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.